Dr. Marapana, you can start now. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to you all. The, today we are conducted uh, one of the uh, web, webinar series under the webinar series in point uh, calling. Uh, the S is under the SLE. SLE consists of the around the thousand four five hundred members in Sri Lanka and also in the worldwide. Uh, the, our aim is aim is update the knowledge of the people, knowledge of the veterans, knowledge, skills, and capabilities of uh, veterans. They are using uh, specially. Uh, specialized people, especially using the area of specialized people to gen uh, to do the this type of uh, webinar series in in this way, in uh, as a uh, in several aspects like the treatment of and surgery of the animal, large and small animals and also reproductive and breeding problems, the zoonotic diseases, nutritional and food safety, like this. They are, today we are conducting the equine colic uh, in the mind knowledge. And me, today, this program is a very useful for the veterinarians in your in the horse practice. Today, because the most of the horses they are get the important diseases the uh, equine calling. The, uh, today we, we are conducting that period in that uh, this uh, lecture period. Every, every person the uh, use the top to uh, the microphone. And do not disturb the lecturer in during the lecture period. The uh, end of the this uh, le lecture, we are giving to all of you to allocate the time to answer the questions and answer the question. Uh, first, I uh, come to the uh, Mr. President uh, to uh, all of all of you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dr. Marapana. Actually, I'm really happy today that we are having a very renowned resource person for the particular subject. Actually, when we were starting this webinar series by the Sri Lanka Veterinary Association, we never thought that this was going like this. Uh, with with the highly, we were highly impressed by the our patrons and our few our veterinarians in the country and the overseas. So once again, welcome you all today, my dear teachers and senior colleagues. And especially the vets who are joining here with us from the overseas, from different countries. And uh, I'm very happy to say that our webinar series has been recognized by the World Veterinary Association also. You can see, go to their website and that is also published there. And uh, so uh, it's a good fact for us and a good uh, uh, privilege for us. And uh, we, we can be proud of our association because there are few associations uh, they are working in this under pandemic situation in the world. So we, would, we should be one of them actually. And so today actually we got a uh, very uh, good person from the faculty uh, who is very uh, capable of doing this uh, subject on uh, horse colic, uh, which is a very different subject because we thought of uh, uh, responding for numerous uh, uh, requests made by our veterinarians to go on di highly diversified fields rather than uh, speaking with the small animals. So last time we uh, conducted a nice lecture by Dr. Ganga on rabbit. You can go to the website and YouTube. You can just view them. So this one also going to be in the YouTube and the Facebook as well. So without taking much time, I'll invite uh, Dr. Sugat, our secretary, to uh, introduce our speak today. Thank you very much, and all the best. You can you can get a lot of take home message. I'm sure. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. It's a pleasure to introduce our resource person today, Dr. Damika Pereira. Dr. Damika Pereira has obtained his BBC degree from Faculty of Veterinary Medicine and Animal Science, University of Peradeniya, in 2004. Later, he earned his MPL degree in Advanced Reproduction Biotechnologies from the same university. Further, he is a fellow of Sri Lanka College of Veterinary Surgeons and a member, member of International Embryo Technology Society as well. During his postgraduate studies, Dr. Pereira was able to establish 
the embryo transfer technology, embryo screening technology, and embryo freezing technology in Sri Lanka. Besides, he is the person who has done the first successful artificial insemination of horse while being the resource person of the first successful sheep AI project and sex cattle semen AI project in the country. Dr. Pereira has published more than 60 research and clinical papers locally and internationally during the last 15 years. Dr. Pereira is a large animal clinician and an equine practitioner for more than 15 years. Further, he has been consulting number of equine units, which are belongs to both government and private sector in the country. Presently, Dr. Pereira is a senior clinician of the farm and farm and teaching hospital and a senior lecturer of the faculty of department of farm animal production and health faculty of veterinary medicine and animal science university of peradinia on behalf of sri lanka veterinary association i would like to invite dr damika perera to continue the webinar thank you Dear Dr. Damika, over to you. Uh, right. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sugar. Uh, I think uh, all of you can see my uh, screen. Is that so? Yes, we can see it. Yes. Yes. Right. Uh, Okay, uh, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, I'm today I'm going to talk about uh, equine colic, right? Then, uh, what is colic? Uh, colic is simply severe abdominal pain. So, but uh, when we consider that in uh, equine perspective, that's the most dangerous, costly uh, uh, problem in equine practice. Uh, in, uh, in addition to that, it's a multifactorial condition. It is uh, not a simple condition. Right, they may have number of causes for the uh, condition. So uh, when we look at the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that that is severe abdominal pain. So they should have stimulants to stimulate the abdominal pain receptors. As you know, there are receptors in the abdominal cavity. So they should have a mechanism to stimulate those receptors. So when we consider about those aspects, uh, first one is uh, distension of the bowel, as you can see here. Sometimes bowel may uh, distended or stomach may distended due to uh, many reasons. In addition to that, uh, stretching of the mesentery, as you can see in the second picture, right? Sometimes uh, mesenteries can uh, right, stretch, right? More than the usual level. So that is another stimulation for the uh, pain stimulation in uh, equines. So uh, inflammation of the stomach, intestinal wall or peritoneal cavity is the other uh, reason to stimulate the pain receptors in the abdominal cavity. So uh, not only that, uh, ischemia, then uh, spasms of the uh, intestinal musculature is the other uh, reason, as you can see in the last picture, right? So due to the ischemia or the spasm may stimulate the pain receptors within the abdominal cavity. So those are the primary uh, stimulants for the uh, colic. So uh, when you consider about the predisposing factors, they should have predisposing factors to stimulate those pain receptors. So when you look at that uh, aspect, so we have to, uh, uh, first we'll discuss about the anatomical and physiological factors that can stimulate the uh, pain receptors, right? So I think uh, uh, when you talk about that, better to have refresh your memory about the Anatomy, anatomy of the GIT, uh, it means GI tract of the hoses, right? When I uh, go through it briefly, you can see the right uh, stomach here. So you may uh, better to notice this pouch shape uh, bottom part of the stomach and uh, uh, pylorus uh, region is at the middle level. It means that feed has to go upright in that point. So then uh, 
lengthy small intestines are there then uh, that we can see blind uh, pouch of uh, uh, cecum here right then uh, cecum may open up into the uh, right ventral uh, colon but although those structures are right wider in uh, uh, size you can see the attachment of that cecum and the uh, uh, large uh, right ventral colon here right in this picture number 9 and number uh, 12 through the narrow opening right that point is narrow so in addition to that that uh, right ventral colon may flex at the sternal area that is sternal flexure of the uh, colon then it may open up into the left ventral colon that also wider structure but uh, other thing is when it come towards the uh, pelvic uh, pelvic area uh, this is the pelvic flexor right then uh, i think uh, you can see the pelvic flexor here right when you look at my cursor uh, this is the pelvic flexor it is a narrow position again then again that pelvic flexor uh, through the pelvic flexor it may open up to the again wider area that is left dorsal colon left dorsal colon again may flex at the diaphragmatic area that is diaphragm diaphragmatic uh, flexor again open up into the right uh, wider area that is right dorsal colon then it may open up to the transverse colon it is a funnel shape one conical shape one and uh, uh, it may connect with the narrow small colon right so when you consider about the uh, passaging of the ingesta it may pass through the gut toward against the gravity it mean it pass towards the upright right it has to pass along the gut upright direction against the gravity so uh, those are the other matters in addition to that uh horses cannot vomit so because of their that anatomical arrangement of the stomach i will discuss those matters in detail uh, later right then uh, as i mentioned earlier that uh, presence of the uh, unfixed position of the left colon when you look at this picture you can see the left view of the uh, stomach sorry uh, left view of the abdominal cavity uh, right you can see the left dorsal and dorsal and ventral colon here right it mean in this picture this this part this uh, one when you look at from uh, that uh, from the left side you can see like this although that the dorsal and ventral colons have the attachment ligamental attachment that entire set has not attached to the uh, body tightly it is loosely attached it can move here and there upright and downward right that is the other point then uh, uh, as i mentioned earlier we can see the lengthy blind cecum uh, uh, right then uh, yeah, those are the main features that i want to uh, highlight here right then when you look at the management aspect so there may have that uh, matters predisposing factors that can uh, right stimulate the pain receptors that is those are due to management right uh, changes or the failures right so first one is irregular exercise and feeding pattern sometimes people may use uh, those animals according to their requirement but when they want they may uh, right put that animal into the stable and will keep there for right uh, one or two days uh, for an example during the working days uh, handlers may use that animal during the weekends they want to get a rest then they may put that animal into the stable right uh, more time then animal Uh, may get irregular exercise then uh, feeding feeding pattern when we consider about the feeding pattern uh, during the working days they may give the regular right uh, feed supply there but in the uh, week ends that handler or the owner wants to get get a rest then they may give a bulky diet for the uh, animal then they may uh, they don't want to come uh, right uh, frequently to see the animal right they may provide it as a bulk then animal may have it as a bulky diet so those are the uh, other things in addition to that insufficient water supply so uh, uh, if that animal is keeping in a stable right it is depend on on the management system sometimes that people may or the handler may not provide the sufficient amount of water if that animal is a free roaming type animal 
especially at the drought season they may not get the sufficient amount of water so then uh, other one is that uh, sudden dietary changes sometimes that uh, especially it may affect with the stall feeding animal mainly so uh, people or the handler may uh, handler or the owner may change the feed type according to the that may be according to the raw material availability sometimes presence of uh, that cheaper material for them right considering the economical aspect sometimes they may change uh, those uh, things in free roaming animals yes they are, they also can uh, get any type of uh, right uh, palatable things available in the pasture that also can cause this kind of uh, problem sudden changes of the uh, diets so uh, other one is uh, too much intense exercise so sometimes people may uh, use that animals for uh, too much of uh, right exercise right then uh, usually they may uh, use for that uh, low level of uh, exercises activities sometimes they according to their requirement they may change the or they may use that animal for intense exercises so that also may affect the affect the uh, stimulation of the pain receptors then other one is the low grazing especially at the drought season in uh, free grazing animals free roaming animals uh, they may get the uh that kind of uh, problems because uh, at the drought season they may uh, have that uh, uh, low accessibility to the pasture right so then lack of that uh, enough amount of herbs they may get this kind of problem other thing is in management aspect uh, if they are not providing the enough uh, amount of uh, uh, roughages or herbs again it would be a uh, matter to digestibility Uh, of the uh, ingest uh, ingest of the grains and other uh, content so it may affect the uh, microbial flora within the gut and the mechanical problems may be there so uh, other thing is use of mold feed that is mainly uh, due to storage uh, problems in the storage facilities when it exposed to the moisture right then uh, right uh, when they keep those uh, those uh, feed bags on the ground uh, right without any right uh, carpet or anything sometimes that uh, climatic changes may induce the growing growth of the fungus mainly in addition to that bacterial count also will be right increase the uh, presence of uh, mold feed again it can cause uh, git problems enteritis right then uh, access to too much water and food after heavy exercise sometimes in the practice the people may uh, bring that those animals to their purposes for the races safari whatever then at the end of that they may right after heavy exercise they may put that animal into the because that handler also right may be right tired they may put that animal into the stable uh, stall then they may provide that little bit of uh, water and uh, excessive amount of uh, grains especially concentrate diets then he may go for the to get a rest so then when we give it just after that animal also tired animal may get more water and more concentrate at once it can cause infection of the right stomach sometimes uh, uh, over distension of the stomach and uh, finally it can cause rupture even right so uh, in addition to that uh, too much uh, feed concentrate minerals and unsoak uh, sugar beet pulps right uh, in uh, in that aspect uh, especially when they when uh, handler uh, provide the uh, concentrate diet in uh, high amount then uh, minerals unsoak uh, sugar beet pulp those can uh, uh, lodge in the stomach as i mentioned earlier right according to the anatomical arrangement it is uh, the lower part of the stomach is like a pouch so it can lodge there so when we give that excessive amount of it so uh, that again it can cause uh, stimulation of the uh, pain receptors so those are the management uh, aspect of factors that can lead to the same problem in addition to that when we look at the uh, other factors so uh, one thing is vices vices mean uh, bad habits simply bad habits of horses that's a separate topic so uh, but uh, i will uh, highlight the uh, related things to this subject so sometimes uh, horses may have 
that uh, several bad habit uh, it mean uh, for an example uh, they may uh, lick the sand they may eat sand they may eat stones or whatever they can see in the surrounding area that's a, they are one of uh, one of their bad habit they may try to try uh, eat that so that uh, bad habit may lead to again uh, stimulation of the pain receptors we will discuss those things in detail right then uh, other one is the stress so uh, they have adapted to response to the sudden environmental changes right that's why they, we have to be get the extreme care when we are trying to handle a horse because when they uh, right here any uh, sound changes in the surrounding area they may not look at the uh, object they may at once they may kick after that they may look at the object that is their behavior that is their protective mechanism so uh, they are a highly excitable type of animals so uh, especially presence of uh, thundering lightning right even those uh, changes can cause uh, colic in uh, right uh, equines so in addition to that when you do that sudden noises around the animal again it can cause right uh, colic so uh, we have to handle those animals carefully then uh, presence of sandy soil at the pasture land sometimes owner may have uh, provide the enough uh, right uh, acres of pasture land for the animal but that pasture land may be on the sandy soil right in that case while animal is eating automatically that sands may come to its mouth and animal may eat those things right that is the other possibility then that those sand may accumulate within the gut then uh, previous abdominal surgeries also can lead to colic so as you can see in this picture right sometimes uh, sometimes it can cause uh, additions secondary to the uh, previous uh, surgery right so, and then uh, in not only that sometimes it can cause stricture formation of the uh, gut in the uh, right along that uh, surgical point so not only that sometimes that uh, intestinal uh, matter uh, materials can uh, leak out to the peritoneal cavity right leading to the peritonitis even right there are those possibilities are there so we have to consider about the those aspect also uh, other one is the parasites so parasitic bird is a right uh, big problem in that equine industry right if they are unless they adapted to the proper uh, schedule of uh, right parasitic control parasites may right uh, develop within the gut then uh, uh, if they are not practicing regular deworming schedule when they use that deworming after prolonged period all the path uh, uh, that worms may die at once then as a clump they may occlude in the narrow point of the git those possibilities are there in addition to that presence of uh, parasite they may damage the mucosal layer when they damage the mucosal layer it, it can cause highly irritation to the animal that irritation may lead to uh, right uh, for the complication of the gut then uh, other one is the foreign bodies so uh, as i mentioned earlier when they eat that foreign material in addition to that uh, as you know the they are may uh, form enterolites within the gut right for to formation of the enterolite those that foreign material that they have already ingested may uh, be supportive right then those that foreign material may act as niders of the uh, enterolite so that possibility also there then uh, other one is the uh, tumor conditions that tumor conditions also uh, may lead to the uh, different complications within the abdominal cavity as you can see in this picture when you look at my cursor right that uh, tumor may be external to the intestines but it may compress the intestines externally then that it may affect with the peristaltic movement and the passage of the ingesta through that area then it may be uh, it may lead to uh, occlusion of the gut so then uh, other one is the previous medicines already that they have used for an example when you use uh, oxytetracycline otc for horses when you inject it they may get uh, colitis so lead into uh, colic so we can't use that uh, otc for uh, those animals then in addition to that when you use uh, for an example uh, anti inflammatory drugs nsaids for uh, prolonged period it may cause ulcerations of the uh, especially at the stomach and the uh, gut so lead into the uh, colic situation so those are the basic uh, 
like predisposing factors that can lead to colic in equines. So uh, let's see the signs of colic. Because although we have discussed about these uh, predisposing factors, when you get a case that uh, handler or the owner may complain about the signs, right? Then uh, what are the signs you can see at the colic? Presence of uh, mild to moderate uh, colic condition, you may see uh, this kind of uh, signs, loss of appetite. So uh, that your first complaint may be like that. Then uh, when you uh, ask about several things, then you can uh, right, uh, realize that when you examine the animal, when you look at the animal, you, you may be able to understand the pawing of the ground like this. Animal may try to pour the ground frequently. Then looking around, when I'm looking at the belly, frequently animal may look at its belly, right, abdominal area. Then we may see restlessness of the animal and stomping of the hind feet. It means that uh, uh, hitting uh, using the hind leg, animal may hit on the ground forcefully. So uh, then next you may see the sweating of the uh, animal. Then uh, animal may lie down uh, uh, frequently and animal may try to be uh, stay in that lie down uh, way and uh, looking at the belly or the abdomen, right? Then uh, depression is the other one. So uh, with the aggravation, you may see the depression. So you may see the lowering of the head, then drowsy eyes, and then uh, without uh, animal may reluctant to move like that. So those are the uh, basic signs of mild to moderate uh, pain condition. Then, uh, then uh, when you look at the uh, more severe cases, more in more severe cases, we may see uh, that uh, hold the ground violently, animal may hold the ground violently, then uh, animal may appear tired. Then uh, you may see the distended abdomen also there, right? Distension, distension of the abdomen like here, you can see the distension. Then uh, sometimes you may see muscle tremors, right? Then no uh, strain. Right, you may see muscle tremors, especially at the right shoulder area. In this area, we can see the muscle tremors. In male uh, horses, they may uh, right stretch the body and uh, relax their penis without urination. They may not urinate, but they may relax the body and the penis. So then, uh, sometimes you may see that uh, kicking the animal violently without without having although any object is not there, animal may kick violently. Uh, then, uh, then uh, with the aggravation, you will see profuse uh, sweating. Then uh, animal may lie down and get up frequently, right? Uh, not only that, you may see uh, that rolling of the animal on the ground and the animal may stay uh, on its back like this. Then uh, other thing is uh, sometimes animal may sit on its hunches like a dog in the second picture, you can see it. This is not a normal position of a horse, right? When they have that kind of pain, they may uh, sit like this. Then when you check the rectal temperature, temperature may be high in uh, cases uh, like uh, that uh, severe inflammatory conditions, but it may be lower at the shock conditions. Then uh, you may notice that uh, tachypnea, tachycardia, then uh, lowering or absence of the gut sound, you, uh, when you auscultate the animal, you may not be able to hear the peristaltic movement, boborythmic sound, but except in spasmodic colic, presence of spasmodic colic, boborythmic sound will be, rate will be increased. So those possibilities are, they are in other cases, you may get the lowering of the uh, gut uh, sound. So when we look at the uh, type of colic, there are different types of uh, colic depending on its uh, right primary causes. When you look at the major type of uh, colic, that uh, first one is infection colic. When you go through the uh, literature, sometimes you may see uh, those things as a uh, obstruct obstructive colic or the infection colic, right? It's a fairly common type of colic in equines. So uh, intestines become blocked by the firm mass of food or 
foreign material. So that, that is the primary uh, reason for that. Then in addition to that, that uh, is a uh, commonly occurring large intestine, especially at the flexors. Already I have mentioned about the uh, related three flexors here, right? One is, uh, as you can see here, pelvic flexor. Other one is the sternal flexor here. Other one is the diaphragmatic flexor. Most of the time, those uh, materials may occlude at those flexor level, right? Uh, for an example, uh, sand. When they eat uh, more sand, sometimes that may be accident accidentally. Sometimes that may be as a bad habit. So uh, it can uh, lodge, especially at the right ventral colon here in this area, right? So with the time, it will uh, it will uh, accumulate there. Then finally, it can occlude like this. It can block the uh, gut like this. And you can see in this picture. Right. In addition to that, uh, again, parasites. Right. When you are at the heavy burden, or the when you are give the uh, antiparasitic drug, uh, I mean deworming drugs after a prolonged period, then uh, right, uh, higher amount of uh, worms may uh, occlude the or block the gut as a clump. So, not only that, uh, presence of low water supply. Uh, or secondary to any other disease, uh, animal may uh, not get the enough amount of water, then again, usual ingesta may uh, impact it there. So uh, again, it can obstruct the gut. Uh, then uh, other one is the enterolith. You can see here, uh, right, uh, enterolith that we have removed at the uh, uh, teaching hospital. So uh, that is secondary to their visors or uh, when they eat that foreign material, those uh, foreign parts, most of the time, those foreign uh, parts may have higher weight, higher gravity. So when it comes to the right uh, wider uh, part of the uh, uh, intestines, it means especially at the corner of colon, right? Uh, and uh, cecal level, it can, uh, lodge here with the peristaltic movements that foreign material may uh, rotate here and there then it will get the right uh, proper shape then uh, with the time they will accumulate minerals that is available in the feed will, will accumulate around the foreign material then it will they will develop a uh, enterolith so with the time it will increase uh, gradually then when it increase it may uh, push towards the uh, narrow part of the over the posterior side of the gut. So then uh, when it comes to the narrow part, it may block in that level. So uh, that is the other possibility. So these are few uh, types of enterolith that we have removed. So here you can see uh, in first picture, you can see the uh, initial stage of a, an enterolith, right? Here you can see, when you see it uh, very clearly, you can see the nylon bands, right? It's a clump of nylon. Now it is organizing as a, uh, right, as an enterolith here, right? Then in the second picture, you can see the, uh, another enterolith. It is more organized than the first one. When you see it very closely, you can see the, cloth here, right? It's a clump of clothes. Here you can see it nicely. Now it is organizing right with the deposition of the minerals here. Then finally it will develop into the pictures like this, right? This is a well-organized uh, right enterolith. So for your reference, uh, a few days ago, um, uh, I uh, have cut it, right? Then in the next picture, you can see the cross-section of it, cross-section of the third uh, enterolith, this one. So here we could see the polythene mass, polythene. So, but as I mentioned earlier, they should have higher gravity to accumulate uh, it within the uh, gut. So uh, to remain it there within the gut. But uh, here, uh, polythenes also, most of the time we can see the uh, polythene. 
the reason is that those animals those are common uh, among uh, animals uh, who are wandering here and there then uh, those animals may eat whatever right they can see as a uh, bad habit then polythene may not be along with that so uh, polythene may be contaminated with soil sand or stones uh, maybe sometimes with feed some feed materials also right that sand soil or stones may provide the way to that polythene because of that polythene may remain within the gut so in this cross section you can see so i have pointed out so at the center you can see a uh, one end of a big stone right considerably bigger uh, stone is there at the center that surrounding part is the uh, uh, polythene and it has contaminated with uh, sand also here right so then that part may act as a nidus that center uh, part then minerals may organize around the uh, that nidus so then they are will form with the peristaltic movement it will get the proper shape then uh, right it will develop little by little right so these are several types of uh, enterolith that we have uh, right uh, removed from horses so this is the biggest one that we have removed uh, right at our uh, veterinary teaching hospital so it is around uh, 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 it is around uh, 8 inches in diameter so in the second picture you can see different irregular shape of uh, entrolith that is totally depending on the nidus within that so uh, according to the shape of the nidus it may develop like this sometimes in the, as you can see in the third picture sometimes you can see this uh, same nidus may lead to multiple entroliths that uh, nylon uh, part is the uh, right uh, cause for that so one clump is here other clump is here another small one is developing here that kind of uh, possibilities also there when you look at this picture you can see the different colors different different uh, patterns different right uh, appearance of entroliths we can see it is depending on the material right uh, and the minerals available to that animal all right then they when you come to the uh, right picture right lower picture you can see a special shape of entrolith here you can see the flat surface here again another flat surface here right if you can see that uh, opposite side again we can see another flat surface in uh, even at the bottom so instead of that oval or the round shape we may see uh, entrolith with flat surfaces when you see in your that in, while you are doing a surgery when you see this kind of uh, uh, entrolith what are the clues that we can get uh, from that uh, entrolid? So that may be the reason. So definitely when you uh, found this kind of uh, entrolid, definitely we have to check for another set of entrolid within the gut. That flatness is due to friction of each other. Right? They should have at least, at least another right uh, entrolid there. So uh, those are the possibilities. Here you can see a set of entrolith that we have removed there right due to the friction of uh, entrolith each other those may get this flat smooth surfaces but at the real surgery sometimes at the time of uh, surgery we may able to find only uh, one uh, such a entrolith right at the site but if it is having that kind of appearance definitely we have to check for several other uh, entrolith on the gut we have to palpate the gut and we have to find for another right hard uh, masses there so then we have to uh, push it towards the site and we have to uh, remove those things also right those possibilities are there so these are the uh, set of uh, entrolith that we have removed in our veterinary teaching hospital uh, right the those are about the impaction colic so this is the that second type is uh, gas colic so that is uh, fairly common among uh, equines then uh, due to uh, gas build up in the intestines then it is a usual process sometimes gas production rate will be increased sometimes they may have transient uh, uh, partial blocks in the uh, gut uh, slowing uh, slow uh, passage rate so those can lead to accumulation of gas within the uh, intestines. So uh, that may be the uh, reason or the uh, reason for the uh, this kind of gas accumulations, right? So in our ultrasound scanning, we can see 
that fully distended uh, intestines there, as you can see here, right? Uh, number of cross sections filled with gas and necroic areas, right? Then uh, uh, that is fairly responsive for the uh, treatments, right? Prognosis is good in that case. So uh, other uh, possibility is uh, spasmodic colic. As I mentioned earlier, when, they, when the horses are highly excitable animals, so uh, when they get uh, uh, sudden excitement, frightened, nervousness, uh, they may get this kind of condition. In addition to that, when horse drinks cold water after heavy uh, workload, then again may get the that stress may uh, initiate the uh, spasmodic colic. So again, it's a it is usually uh, responsive for the uh, treatments. So uh, prognosis uh, would be uh, good. So when we look at the uh, fourth uh, type of colic, it would be uh, volvulus or the torsion, it means simply uh, twisted gut. As you can see in the right top corner, typically we can see uh, like this. So twisting of the gut, that uh, this part, that hanging part may totally occluded there, obstructed there, then blood supply may arrest. So that lower part may have the ischemia, then initial degeneration, then the uh, necrosis. So uh, without doing the uh, going for the surgery, we can't uh, resolve the um, problem. So immediately we have to go for the uh, surgery in that case. So here uh, in this uh, pictures, you can see that this is the right dorsal colon, right ventral colon, right? Then sometimes, as I mentioned uh, earlier, this uh, free part of the uh, left dorsal and ventral colon, as it has uh, freely movable, uh, moving there, it can twist it. While animal is jumping, moving, it can uh, twist it. But that twisted point may come to the right uh, dorsal and ventral colon. That initially, that left side may twist it due to the right uh, free mobility. But that twisted point may sometimes may locate at the uh, right side, right uh, dorsal and ventral colon. Again, sim similarly, it may occlude the blood supply. Uh, then uh, hanging part may uh, right uh, undergo the ischemia and necrosis. That those possibilities are uh, there. So uh, that is due to uh, volvulus. Then other possibility is displacement of the intestines. That is the other uh, possible method that can lead to. Uh, colic. A portion of the intestines uh, may move, right? May displace its original position. Again, when you look at this, uh, right, uh, our that basic uh, picture, this free part of the freely attached uh, left dorsal and ventral colon can uh, move upright and downward, right? Again, here and there uh, due to its freely attachment while the animal is struggling, moving, jumping. So uh, because of the, the narrow nature of the uh, pelvic flexure here, right, there's a high tendency to uh, have low uh, passage rate in that area or there's a high tendency to uh, accumulate uh, material there. Then uh, that part may have the higher gravity with the, with the movement of the animal that uh, as you can see in this, uh, this picture, this uh, freely movable, uh, part of the intestines may right twisted right it can uh, sometimes it can as you can see in the uh, third picture it can wrap around the cecum and the right dorsal and ventral colon like this it can wrap around like this so occluding the obstructing the right uh, blood supply and the uh, git so uh, option is we have to go for the immediate uh, surgery so not only that, uh, another displacement possibility is there. Again, it is with the uh, left dorsal and ventral uh, colon. Uh, right, as you can see here, sorry. Uh, this is the uh, left dorsal and ventral colon, pelvic flexure is there. It can move upright, upward and downward while animal is uh, moving. So unfortunately, there's a supportive uh, right anatomical arrangement uh, there that here you can see the spleen. Spleen has attached with the uh, stomach. Uh, gastrosplenic ligament is there. 
in between spleen and the uh, uh, stomach there is a groove a right, depressed area so while moving that uh, part upright and downward sometimes it can trap into that groove right then it may uh, right uh, cause uh, right obstruction of the uh, gut so uh, in my case i have seen uh, right uh, another complicated situation with that uh, uh, condition in the right uh, right lateral side you can see that picture in addition to the trapping of that uh, intestine it uh, it was twisted in that case twisted and trapping both uh, conditions were there the, here you can see the right twisted point ischemic right appearance is there so again that can lead to same uh, problem so uh, right then uh, this is the other uh, possible causes intersusceptions so uh, simply it is uh, known as telescoping of the bowel commonly occur in the uh, ileo cecal region so if you as you can remember the uh, right first picture at this ileo cecal ileo cecal region it can happen especially in the small intestines right then uh, it may happen especially uh, with the severe irritation of the git irritation may be due to uh, worm in severe worm infestation they may damage the mucosal layer leading to uh, different ulcerations so sometimes irritation may be secondary to viral or bacterial disease conditions there right then uh, because of severe irritation there may uh, that peristaltic movement may be vary then animal may have excessive straining right then uh, excitement especially in falls that can lead to uh, telescoping of the uh, or the intersusception of the small intestine especially right that can lead to the colic again uh, surgery is the uh, option we have for that then uh, seventh one is uh, enteritis colitis or diplocolitis so enteritis uh, as you know enteritis mean at the uh, infection in the inflammation of the small intestines then uh, colitis mean inflammation of the right colons then diplocolitis mean uh, inflammation of the colon plus uh, colon and the cecum right simultaneously those can happen there that is the uh, um that primary causes may be due to bacterial viral or uh, fungal type of uh, infections right that may be uh, secondary to uh, right uh, rotten when when they use rotten food rotten feed for the animals right when the animal eat uh, right uh, whatever rotten things in the um, available in the partial ants or the right environment so that can uh, cause uh, right multiplication of uh, uh, pathogens there so uh, sometimes uh, most of the time we have seen in uh, several cases that uh, because of the right failures to maintain the proper storage conditions that may can lead to fungal multiplication on the concentrate diet uh, right when you look at the uh, that uh, concentrate we can see uh, right uh, darkening of uh, those pellets so uh, when you smell it you can uh, feel the rancidity there then uh, when you check the sample we can uh, find high uh, aflatoxin count uh, level so that can again lead to severe inflammatory condition then sudden again sudden dietary changes sudden dietary changes uh, may cause uh, uh, ph changes within the gut so acidity will be very that ph uh, sudden ph changes may uh, act against the uh, supportive common cells then they those uh, right uh, Uh, levels may be lower then opportunistic pathogens may multiply rapidly there and they may replace the uh, right area with that then they may lead to uh, enteritis so animal may express the signs of colic again the eighth uh, type of uh, uh, colic is gastric distension so gastric uh, when you look at the gastric distension primarily uh, that is due to engorgement of the uh, stomach mainly with uh, that uh, uh, concentrate diet right so uh, when we give that uh, bulky diet as a right uh, wrong management practice it can lodge it may can accumulate within the uh, stomach so when we uh, when those uh, people right uh, give the concentrate diet without giving water without giving herbs at first at concentrate diet always uh, tend to accumulate there right that anatomical arrangement also in the stomach is supportive to uh, have that in addition to that unfortunately they have those horses having 
another weak point, as I mentioned earlier, in the esophagus, when it opened it to the stomach through the uh, cardiac region, cardiac sphincter is a muscular, right, thicker sphincter. It's a thicker sphincter. It is uh, working only one way. It may open up into the stomach, but never open up in towards the towards to the uh, esophagus. So once they eat uh, something, it may remain uh, within the stomach. It has to pass through the gut to expel out it. Right? That is their right uh, natural arrangement. So although it is engorged with the uh, concentrate diet, or, uh, then they will produce more gas. Then they will uh, tend to uh, inflation of the stomach. Ultimately, it may rupture, but that sphincter may not. Uh, relax, right? So that uh, possibility is there. Uh, that is the other type of dis uh, gastric distension colic. Uh, next one is the uh, thromboembolic colic. That also right possible in uh, equines. So uh, that may be due to uh, uh, primary that basic common uh, cause is uh, due to larval migration of the uh, blood worms along the, uh, uh, especially at the mesenteric artery, uh, cranial mesenteric artery is the most uh, vulnerable area. So once they right, uh, pass through the uh, mesenteric artery, those larvae may uh, damage, mechanical dam mechanically damage the uh, mucosal layer of it. Then there will arise uh, blood clots. With the blood flow, those clots can uh, separate from the attached point and it can obstruct at the uh, capillary level then leading to ischemia and then necrosis and rupturing of the affected uh, affected uh, um, intestinal part leading to peritonitis and death of the animal. The thing is the uh, matter is those animals may not express the acute signs uh, most of the time. It would be a right uh, gradual process. Then we may right delay to understand it. That is the other possibility because they may express the mild to moderate signs throughout the period until the last uh, moment. Then, uh, so, uh, strongylus vulgaris is the right main uh, parasite that can lead to this matter, right? Then, uh, in addition to that, we have seen uh, several other cases. Uh, uh, blood clots can uh, right, arise within the blood vessels, even in, in other animals, even in humans. Right then, um, with the normal mechanism, it will dissolve there. But when we use those animals for heavy exercise, heavy right work, when that clot uh, uh, obstruct in a, uh, that kind of places while animal is in uh, heavy exercise, it means while animal is having high blood flow, high blood pressure. Sometimes it can cause rupturing of the uh, blood vessels, especially at the same same uh, mesenteric arteries. Right, then uh, prognosis is poor, especially in this uh, thromboembolic conditions. Right, in this uh, uh, picture, right, uh, right, lower uh, picture, you can see uh, this. Uh, this is from a real case. Uh, we have done this uh, post mortem yesterday. Right, so that kind of uh, possibilities are uh, there. So, uh, in addition to that, there are several other right uh, poses, and there are unidentified poses. Uh, still, still there, right? So that area is open to uh, do the research and identifications. I, sometimes animal may express uh, con uh, continuous colic signs. So uh, when we, although we have done all the tests and those may be right negative, but animal may express the uh, signs. Those possibilities are uh, there, uh, but in most of the cases we can diagnose. Most of the cases belongs to those previous uh, nine categories. Right. The other important thing is uh, diagnosis. Right. For the diagnosis, we have to uh, use these clues. We have to get the history, signalments, clinical observations, signs of uh, pain, clinical examination, laboratory examination, then uh, radiography, ultrasonography, then uh, ancillary diagnostic aids. Right. We have to use these uh, techniques for that. So using the techniques, we can try to diagnose the condition. So we'll go through uh, those things in detail, right? When you look at the history, that is very important to rule out this, uh, right? Different conditions and to uh, diagnose the uh, particular condition. We had to ask many questions from the handler or the owner uh, about the medical history of the animal, whether it is right, uh, 
uh, recurrent condition, right? Then uh, whether they have done, uh, it has gone through the abdominal surgery previously, right? So then uh, they are that feeding pattern, whether they are uh, under stall feeding or free grazing, right? Then uh, about the uh, possibility of ingestion of sand, foreign bodies, then accessibility for sand and foreign bodies. So we have to ask about those things to uh, rule out possibilities one by one. Then the changes and storage of uh, feed. So we have to ask about their storage condition, right? Then, uh, uh, then uh, recent sudden changes of the feed. So then uh, consumption of water, water availability, then uh, recent consumption uh, level of the water, then uh, changes in uh, exercise level, whether they have used that animal for a heavy exercise uh, uh, during the last few days, like that. So then uh, changes of the stable. Sometimes when they uh, change the stable according to the management requirement, because uh, that animal may be uh, right in uh, one place, then uh, then uh, that particular person, sometimes that person may hand over that animal to the uh, somebody to look after that. Then uh, they may bring that animal to a totally different climatic zone. Then uh, those uh, changes may lead to excitement of the animal, right? Then frightening of the animals. So then uh, we have to ask about the recent uh, dentistry. So if, if it has gone uh, through the recent dentistry, sometimes it may end up with uh, gingivitis. So uh, gingivitis, uh, because of that pain, animal may have low appetite. Low appetite, uh, uh, when it lasts for a few days, animal may have low uh, content within the stomach, but they may accumulate um, uh, HCl acid. Due to accumulation of the acid, it can lead to uh, ulcerations of the uh, stomach. So as you know, that lower part of the uh, uh, stomach is having a glandular part, then our top part is non-glandular part of the stomach. Then in between that, we can see the margoplicatus band. And so uh, most of the time we may see the ulceration just above the margo applicators that is due to uh, that is within the non-glandular area. So uh, with the accumulation of the right uh, acids while animal is moving, it can flash. So when it once it uh, right contact frequently with the right non-glandular part, it is sensitive for that animal may get the ulceration. So those possibilities we have to uh, rule out. Then uh, deworming history. So um, as I have mentioned earlier, right, it can lead to the same problem. So we have to ask about the deworming history. Then uh, other treatment or the uh, uh, medications, right? Uh, during the last uh, few days, though, because we have to ask those things uh, carefully. As we know, sometimes those uh, right handlers, owners may have given certain injections to those animals, right? So. Uh, we have to ask about the uh, giving of uh, OTC, giving frequent uh, injections of uh, NSAIDs. So we have to uh, those uh, we have to get those informations carefully. Then uh, when you look at the signal months of the animal, right uh, in between two to ten years period is the highly vulnerable period of for uh, colic because during that period they are highly susceptible, right. For different at the younger stage, they may get uh, right colic due to uh, number of excitement. When with the age, there may there is a high tendency to have that uh, uh, obstructive mass um, such as enrolic, right? So uh, then, when you look at the highly vulnerable breed, Arabian horses are the uh, highly vulnerable breed for this uh, right uh, colic condition. So when you look at the clinical observation. So when you re when you go there, we have to observe the animal right behavior of the horse within the uh, premises. So we have to observe it. Then uh, we have to look at the appearance, uh, expressions of the animal. It would be supportive to understand the uh, severity of the uh, um, uh, condition. Then uh, uh, abdominal distension. So we can we have to look at the uh, abdominal area, especially right ventrolateral area. So where the where the uh, intestines are located. So especially presence of gas colic, you can see the distended uh, abdominal area in that particular region. So then uh, sweating, right? Muscle uh, fasciculation of the muscle tremor, right? Area of the self-inflicted trauma, animal may um, uh, get the self damage, right? With the, uh, that excitement like this, like that. Uh, facial expressions, 
right? It, it we support you to understand the um, condition like that. So different uh, conditions are there. In addition to that, uh, we have we can observe the defecation. So sometimes we may notice absence of the loss of the uh, feces there. Sometimes we may notice that uh, scanty feces. Sometimes uh, we may notice that loose uh, feces uh, without uh, form or nature, uh, like uh, watery semi-solid feces. So those would be very much supportive to understand the uh, severity of or the changes of the uh, right uh, uh, GIT that uh, that can lead to uh, colic condition. So uh, other one is uh, signs of pain. Already I have discussed those parts. So uh, you know that uh, right uh, lying down uh, frequency, then uh, uh, that uh, stomping, right? Then uh, that uh, sweating, pawing on the ground, uh, kicking of the abdomen, right? And then rolling, right? Many signs are there. We have to observe those things. Then uh, when you look at the clinical examination part, when you uh, start your clinical examination, uh, you may see the uh, increased respiratory rate, right? In uh, uh, most of the cases, but not in almost all the cases. Sometimes at the mild stages, uh, you may not notice that. Uh, then high temperature. Sometimes uh, a slightly elevated temperature may be there, but in uh, um, uh, conditions such as enteritis, we may notice the uh, right uh, elevated temperature, uh, highly elevated temperature, um, presence of the inflammation at the gut. Uh, that also possible, but at the latter part, uh, temperature may be lower. So at the final stage of the uh, animal that those possibilities are there. Then uh, when you check the oral mucous membranes, uh, uh, color would be uh, right pink in normal animals as you can see in the uh, first uh, picture here, right? That would be the right uh, expected uh, salmon pink color. Then sometimes it would be cyanose that uh, presence of hypoxic uh, condition or the toxic conditions. So sometimes uh, it would be muddy or the right uh, a pinkish color uh, right uh, uh, that uh, you can see that appear hyperemic uh, appearance with the infectious situations right when you check the moist uh, moisture uh, of the moistness of the uh, again gum it would be dry then when you check the crt it would be higher than two seconds uh, those are the possibilities in addition to that uh, when you check the Heart rate, it would be increased in uh, uh, most of the cases, but at the mild cases, sometimes you may not notice that with the aggravation of the conditions uh, that pain may stimulate the uh, respiration and the heart rate. So in advanced cases, definitely we will able to observe it, right? When you auscultate the, uh, uh, that uh, percuss, auscultation or percussion uh, in the abdominal area, especially uh, especially at the uh, right uh, uh, ventrolateral area, right, where the uh, intestines are uh, located. In most of the cases, we may uh, notice the lowering or absence of the peristaltic movements there, right? And so that may be due to obstructions there, uh, there that except in uh, spasmodic colic. In the spasmodic colic, it would be uh, right higher in that level. So those are the other uh, possibilities, right? Then. Uh, Uh, right, uh, when you examine the, uh, when you do the rectal examination, we may see the distenders, uh, distended or edematous, uh, small or the large intestine. Sometimes we may be able to feel it. Uh, in your rectal examination, uh, large intestines or the small intestines, uh, uh, for an example, presence of volvulus condition, it may uh, occlude there, then that uh, obstructed part having ingesta, that pathogens are there, they may produce more gas, then it will uh, distend, then this, uh, due to accumulation of the gas, that bubble loops may distend, then it may float within the abdominal cavity in uh, the per rectal examination, you may be able to feel that distended uh, intestines there. Uh, same way that uh, presence of displacement of the right, uh, uh, especially uh, large colon. Again, 
it may uh, obstruct then that uh, accumulate uh, there may high tendency to accumulate the gas then again we may able to uh, feel it perectally right then uh, other uh, thing is uh, in your perectal examination we may able to feel the infection of uh, small large intestines especially when it uh, closer to the rectal area right uh, not always so in uh, uh, other thing is uh, we can uh, as mentioned earlier displacement of the large colon when it trapped with in between spleen and the stomach so we can feel the end part with the uh, distended manner right even in your perectal examination that possibility is there so then uh, not only at the uh, right observation uh, inserting our hand we can examine the loss of or scanty or so uh, that semi solid feces there when you insert your hand you can uh, realize that loss of absence of uh, feces within the rectum sometimes scanty feces uh, there are that uh, small amount of uh, formed feces as you can see in this picture sometimes that uh, semi solid uh, unformed feces may be there right so uh, in your clinical examination you can uh, identify it uh, sometimes you may see that you may uh, able to uh, find hematgesia also there right then uh, uh, feces uh, unformed feces with the blood so that also possible so so the meaning is uh, loss of appetite loss of sorry loss of uh, feces mean that is due to complete obstruction of the gut so scanty feces mean that partial obstruction of the uh, gut so then uh, semi solid feces mean uh, that is uh, due mainly due to enteritis condition or the colitis uh, colitis or the enteritis or the uh, diplocolitis condition right then uh, that uh, pellets formation not be there so with the aggravation of it you may see the bloody feces in the enteritis condition so other possible uh, examination is uh, when you have doubt about the distended uh, uh, stomach we can insert a nasogastric uh, tube right we can uh, insert nasogastric tube through the nostrils then uh, when it reach to the right through the through the sphincter we can pass it when it reach to the right uh, stomach if it is fully engorged fully distended gas accumulated that gas fluid and uh, di diluted uh, that ingesta may come through the uh, nasogastric tube as a nasogastric reflux so that way we can uh, confirm that also right then uh, laboratory examination when you look at the laboratory examination to diagnose the condition we can uh, get a blood sample and we can check it under uh, laboratory condition then sometimes uh, it would be supportive uh, to diagnose the presence of uh, lower uh, total protein level right sometimes that may be uh, you may able to find the high pcv level right pc high pcv level may be due to uh, dehydration uh, that uh, low protein uh, level may be due to rupturing of the intestines within the abdomen right due to uh, loss of the uh, protein there then uh, when you check the wbc count wbc count may be lower with the uh, rupture of the intestines so you know, sometimes we can get that uh, clues to uh, identify the possible uh, uh, reasons there are possible uh, right uh, possibilities there then uh, we can analyze again we can analyze the peritoneal fluid we can collect it from the uh, most dependent part of the uh, abdominal area uh, just right side to the uh, median plane uh, we can collect it then normal uh, as you can see in this uh, picture a this is the normal color of the uh, uh, peritoneal fluid color would be clear straw right appearance then uh, cell count uh, when you check the wbc count of the uh, peritoneal fluid it would be less than uh, 5000 per microliter but when it affected right if it is having uh, right peritonitis conditions right uh, when it affected it would they may have higher than 5000 wbc uh, per microliter then the color may change straw color to more reddish color in appearance when you check the even other cell types the uh, wbc's wbc count uh, sorry uh, 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 erythrocytes so uh, red blood cells that would be higher in uh, count that possibilities are there so um, other uh, uh, clues can get uh, through the radiography 
right? That is really valuable to understand the right enterolith conditions, presence of uh, impaction, right? Here in these uh, two pictures, you can see the accumulation of sand within the uh, right ventral colon, right? Then here you can see the uh, right uh, formed enterolith within the gut. So that way we can understand it. So then uh, ultrasonography is the other uh, supportive uh, right uh, method to um, diagnose the condition. Then uh, we can uh, sometimes we can see the obstructive mass uh, right via the ultrasound scanning. Then uh, we can uh, observe the consistency of the ingesta, whether it is impacted, if, whether it is uh, moving there, right? Whether it is having uh, more gas, right? We can observe those things. Then uh, we can observe the intestinal movement with the that, uh, rate of the peristaltic movement, right? Thickening of the uh, wall, right? Then um, likewise, strangulation, intersusceptions, we can observe those things uh, via the uh, ultrasound scanning even. So when you look at the ancillary uh, diagnostic uh, aids, sorry, uh, aids, uh, we can use uh, endoscopy, right? Especially when you suspect uh, gastric ulcerations, uh, then uh, gastric impaction, uh, other than that, some very rarely they may have that um, carcinoma types, tumor types, uh, squamous cell carcinoma. So through the endoscopy, we can uh, see those things. If you want, you can get a biopsy sample for the further right investigations. So in this picture, you can see the ulcerations at the right non-glandular area. So this is the glandular area, right? Uh, likewise, we can see that. So other than that, we can go for the laparoscopy. Right. When you go to the laparoscopy, uh, again, we can see the trauma within the right uh, internal organs, then uh, colonic displacements, strangulation, strangulations, additions of the uh, right intestines. We can see those things through the uh, laparoscopy. That uh, would be very much supportive. So uh, while animal is in a standing position uh, under the uh, sedation and uh, local anesthesia, we can do that. Uh, we can see the uh, changes within the abdominal cavity that also very much support you to understand the uh, situation within the abdominal area. So uh, when you look at the treatments, <clears throat> mainly so uh, presence of that uh, our uh, client or the owner or the handler may notice that primarily, then they may call you. Sometimes uh, when they call um, you, you may be far away right from the particular place. Then, but over, through over the phone, they may ask about the right um, uh, first aids, the things that we should do initially, right? Then uh, for most of the cases, right, if we advise them to do the hot fermentation of the right uh, ventral, ventrolateral abdominal area would be uh, very much effective, right? Uh, we can ask them to uh, put in that warm water into a bottle and uh, right, do the hot fermentation or using the IR lab if it is available, or using right uh, at least at least using hair dryer, right? They can uh, do the hot fermentation of the right ventrolateral abdominal area, right? Until you uh, read there for the further investigation. For most of the because uh, gas colic and uh, right um, uh, those are highly uh, right in most of the cases we can see gas colics. Right, and uh, it is high, very much effective for uh, those conditions, even, even for other conditions to give a relief to the animal. We can use that hot fermentation uh, until you reach and do the uh, further examination. So, not only that, uh, we can uh, ask them to uh, do the walking ex exercise. That, that's another relief to the pain, and we can uh, change the mindset of the animal to uh, give a psychological right uh, uh, relief. So we can ask them to do the walking exercise. And meantime, we should ask them to uh, uh, stop the concentrate diet if they are right, giving it. And if animal is having that uh, right appetite, animal may tend to eat that, but we should ask them to stop that concentrate feed. So, and uh, to maintain it uh, under herbs, right? Those are the uh, first aids that we can uh, uh, inform them. Then uh, other thing is, uh, after going there, if it is a right, uh, my main thing is we have to control the pain of those animals. If it is a mild condition, we can uh, go for the flunixine meglobin. I have given all the dose rates and uh, roots, right? Uh, or ketoprofen. We can use uh, one of that, 
right? Then O, we can use uh, Buscopam compositum as a right uh, anti-inflammatory and uh, uh, spasmolytic uh, right action also there. So then uh, we can use uh, one of that for mild colic to give a relief to the pain. So presence of moderate level colic, then again, we can uh, go for the flunixine meglumin O ketoprofane, one of that. With that, we can use Buscofam compositum, right? And uh, again, if it is uh, developing towards the right severe side, then we can uh, use silicine or detomidine. It means one of that. So uh, in moderate level, we can use flunixine uh, or the ketoprofane plus uh, Buscopam, right? When it is uh, developing towards the right uh, more severe, then we can go for the uh, mild level of uh, silicine or the detomidine. So those are in all are in IV route, right? So if the condition is uh, severe, right? If you can see the severe signs, then definitely we have to go for the better to go for the silicine or detomidine, right? Then to have more potential action, we can couple silicine with several other uh, drugs, as you can see here, right? Uh, uh, Butaphenol, right? If it is available, we can use that like that. So we can uh, use those things. Uh, for or to more potentiate the action, right? That way, those are sedative uh, drugs, and at the same time, then the analgesic action also there. So we can use those drugs to give a relief from the pain, right? But specific that primary course would be there. So we have to um, have that uh, treatment for even primary causes. So if you suspect uh, uh, gas colic, it means in your when you are in your examination. Right, uh, when you auscultate the abdominal area, you may uh, able to hear the absence of uh, low borborygmic sound. Or in your examination, you may able to see the distended uh, right intestines there. Then uh, externally, you may notice the uh, distended uh, abdominal area at the right ventrolateral side. So then uh, in addition to that, sometimes you may notice uh, farting of the animal. Right, then uh, you can uh, use the hot fermentation. You can ask them to do the hot fermentation uh, and walking exercise right further. In addition to that, we can give uh, that garlic and the ginger to those animals. We have to uh, crush those things together and we can uh, give it to right eat. Or we can use the juice of it and we can drench it. Right, it would be very much support you to uh, have the relief from uh, that colic. Then uh, not only that, we can do the uh, we, uh, luke warm water enema even, right? Using uh, uh, one to two buckets of uh, luke warm water using the enema pump, we can uh, do the uh, enema, right? When you uh, do the enema, we have to cover the gastric tube. Uh, sorry, the, we have to cover the uh, tube, enema, pump, enema tube uh, using your hand. It means the end of the enema tube right if you uh, if you can see my this finger you imagine this is the uh, tip of the enema tube we have to cover it using the other hand not the block you have to just cover it then you have to insert it to the uh, rectum so we should never pass the uh, enema tube along through the rectum it may perforate or it may damage the uh, rectal area right then uh, we should ask somebody to uh, pump the uh, fluid it will make me right uh, go more anteriorly, right? Then uh, it may be support you to uh, stimulate the myantric and aorbar flexors uh, to uh, uh, support the peristaltic movement there, right? When you suspect uh, spasmodic colic, it means uh, right uh, after lightning, thundering, right? Uh, then uh, when you auscultate, you may be able to hear the higher borborygmic uh, rate, right? Likewise, when you um, uh, suspect it, then we can we have to go for the buscopam compositum because it is having uh, that analgesic action plus uh, spasmodic and uh, spasmolytic action is there so uh, after that we have to provide the calm environment uh, to the animal to settle it right so those are the specific things that we have to do for the spasmodic colic and it is very uh, responsive really responsive then when you uh, suspect about the uh, enteritis, colitis, or diplocolitis, definitely we have to go for the antibiotics, right? Most probably IV antibiotics, right? Uh, it means uh, uh, in your examination, right? Uh, per rectal examination, uh, if you can see the uh, semi solid uh, uh, 
feed material. So if you can see externally semi solid feed material, then uh, uh, when you uh, do the ultrasound scanning, sometimes you may see the right uh, feces uh, through the gut, ingesta through the gut. So uh, in that case, uh, you have to suspect about the uh, enteritis condition. Then you have to check the feed storage, right? If it is having a right moldy uh, feed, then we can have to check for the rancidity. Then we have to send a sample to analyze the right uh, uh, toxic levels. So after toxin level, during that period, we have to start the antibiotic. Uh, uh, better to go for the IV antibiotic for the uh, right better one of the animal. Uh, for an example, we can go for the cefuroxime in IV root. Right, uh, then uh, sometimes endotoxemic uh, to give a relief from the endotoxemic toxemic condition. If we have facilities to identify the possible toxin, then we can go for the uh, possible that uh, anti serum. Then, or else, uh, considering that, we can uh, give flunixin also. It is very much uh, useful to uh, control the endotoxic uh, conditions. Right, in addition to uh, that, presence of uh, gastric uh, distension. Again, we have to, as I mentioned earlier, we have to insert the nasogastric tube. Uh, when you insert the nasogastric tube, again, we have to lubricate it. Then carefully, we have to insert it. While you are inserting the nasogastric tube, uh, using the other end of the tube, we have to better to uh, uh, blow it, blow through the nasogastric tube. While blowing through the nasogastric tube, you have to pass it. Because that, uh, that uh, esophagus is uh, uh, that uh, soft, part of the tissue and although it is a tube-like structure, it is not a right, uh, it is not having a cylindrical cross section. It's a flat structure. When you try to pass that uh, uh, tube, it may damage the, it may uh, damage the mucosal layer of the uh, esophagus. So once you uh, right blow it through the nasogastric tube, while you are blowing, when you try to pass the nasogastric tube, front part of the esophagus, front to the right tip of the nasogastric tube may inflate with your right blowing. Then without any friction, that tube may go to the uh, stomach. So that way we can uh, remove the nasogastric uh, uh, reflux, uh, giving a relief to the animal, right? If when you suspect that uh, matter. Then uh, presence of uh, volvulus torsion, displacement, intersusceptions, definitely, definitely we have to go for the uh, laparotomy surgery under general anesthesia. So uh, uh, if you uh, see the thromboembolic condition, again, we have to go for the surgery, right? Although you have to go for the surgery, when you go through the literature, you may see that prognosis is poor, right? Then uh, other one is uh, infection. When you notice that infection, uh, last option is the uh, laparotomy and do the uh, correction of uh, it. But before go for that, we have, there are several other uh, chances, other opportunities for that. We can uh, do the intestinal, uh, we can insert, we can uh, introduce intestinal lubricants. For an example, mineral oil, liquid paraffin, two to four liters uh, per head, per head mean 500 kg animal, adult animal. Then uh, in addition to that, we can uh, use, uh, use uh, diactyl sodium sulfosuccinate. So, right, um, 20 milligram per kg in four liters of water, we can uh, either drench or we can use it to do the enema. So it will be very much supportive uh, when you suspect that uh, uh, impaction due to fecal matter or meconium in uh, uh, falls. If you are using for falls, we have uh, better to uh, go for one liter of it maximumly, right? Uh, for adults, we can go for the four liters of it, right? Then it would be uh, supportive to uh, softening of it. Then we can, we can use magnesium sulfate, right? Uh, uh, dissolved in uh, warm water, and uh, we can give it in oral route. Presence of uh, impacted uh, mass uh, of feed, right? It would be very much supportive to uh, loosening of the of that. Then uh, xylem uh, methyl cellulose fiber, right? We can again uh, we can use uh, presence of the when you suspect sand accumulation within the gut, right? Uh, we can give it. Uh, once or three times uh, uh, daily, then uh, it would be support you to uh, evacuate the accumulated uh, sand. So uh, in addition to that, in addition to the in, uh, introducing of lubricants, we can do uh, many things. We can use uh, lukewarm uh, soap water enema, right? 
so then after after introducing that uh, intestinal lubricants then we can do the leo warm soap water enema right we have to dissolve uh, soap in warm water then using the enema pump we have to pump it that uh, lukewarm water support you to stimulate the peristaltic movement of the gut stimulating the myentric and nerve bark plexus then uh, warm water may uh, sorry uh, that soap may support you to uh, lubricate the gut so in addition to that then uh, as a next step uh, after the uh, enema then we can ask uh, them to give the walking exercise to the animal again it would be support you to uh, stimulate the uh, gut peristaltic movements right Pas support the passaging of the right in just touch with the gut we can try uh, that way initially then uh, if it is not responsive then we have to go for the surgery then after that we can have to consider about the supportive or the prophylactic uh, uh, treatments so then uh, fluid is the essential part there so we can use iv fluid so sometimes we may have to use a stomach tube to uh, write or, or manually we can drench it but uh, when you suspect uh, nasogastric uh, reflux, it means distend distension of the stomach. We should not go for the uh, uh, we should not go for the oral route, uh, right? Bulky uh, fluid, right? So uh, the other one is the uh, other possibility is the gastric ulceration. Sometimes, um, due to many reasons, animal may have low appetite, presence of low appetite for several days. Those horses are highly vulnerable for the uh, ulcerations as I mentioned earlier. So to prevent that, we can use uh, uh, systemic antacids. Uh, cementine is one of that. Then uh, we can go for the local antacids, magnesium hydroxide or aluminum hydroxide containing uh, product. Uh, brand names, yellow seal, uh, right, bale seed, uh, many uh, brand names are there. We can use those things uh, to uh, control the uh, possible gastric uh, ulcerations. So prevention is the best one, right? So we have to consider about the uh, prevention. So considering those aspects, after even after our treatment, we have to educate our uh, clients to uh, right, prevent these conditions uh, again and again or for their other animals, right? Then we have to, we should advise them to provide enough physical activities to their right horses. In some animals may keep the horses as pets, but when they won't, they may use uh, those animals for uh, riding during uh, even in uh, right uh, other period they may put that animal into the stable and keep there right that is uh, not suitable we have although we don't want to use that animal daily we should advise them to provide the uh, physical activities so I mean uh, at least walking exercise right it mean uh, right 45 minutes uh, morning 45 minutes evening right we have to right and provide the walking exercise for uh, uh, that's even stable horses Right, then uh, maintain the regular feeding schedule without changing the right uh, feeding schedule. They have to maintain that feeding schedule uh, right uh, regularly. Right, sudden changes may lead to uh, that uh, pH changes of the gut. Right, in uh, leading to right as I mentioned earlier, uh, multiplication of uh, opportunistic pathogens. Right, end up with enteritis. So uh, we should ask them to ensure the constant access to the clean water right uh, absence of uh, clean water or um, absence of enough amount of water again it can cause infection and many complications as i mentioned earlier then uh, we should advise them to provide at least 60 percent of digestible energy uh, from uh, forage it means they should have enough amount of herbs in their ration right then it would be because it contain more fiber fiber may support you to uh, passage process of the uh, gut right without uh, obstructions then uh, do not feed uh, excessive digestible energy that can lead to uh, accumulation of uh, amino acid leading to ulcerations and further complications uh, do not feed moldy hay or right uh, grain although it is cheaper although it is available we should uh, prevent accessibility uh, to those uh, moldy hay or grain right then uh, feed hay and uh, water uh, before grain, that is very, very important, right? Uh, as a practice, they have to uh, do this. If they are doing that way, right, they can uh, prevent uh, that uh, uh, infections of the uh, infection of the feed material within the stomach, right? So at the beginning, they have to give the uh, herbs. Then when they give herbs, hay, 
that concentrate feed may uh, drop down onto that hay then it will mix with that then that fiber content may support you to uh, passage it without any blocking of the stomach then when they give water before the grain then water is there then grain may drop down onto the water dissolving it uh, at the water and again animal may have may not have difficulty to pass it through the right gut so uh, other thing is uh, provide access to the forage throughout the day right not only at the feeding uh, time they should have throughout the day that is their one of the habit so after the exercise when they uh, put that animal into the stable always we should ask them to uh, uh, provide additional hay so they can practice like this they can hang a hay back within the stable then animal may not eat at once through that hay back they may apprehend uh, little by little right throughout the day it, it is very much support you to maintain the gut health they may maintain the uh, fiber enough amount of fiber content throughout the gut so uh, do not allow to overgraze the pasture land sometimes it can happen when we put those animals a higher number of animals into the limited uh, right uh, acres of the pasture land or at the drought season right uh, when oh, when we put the animals into the same pasture land frequently right it's, it can happen we should avoid that to uh, uh, prevent the ingestion of the uh, soil sand and unwanted material there then do not feed uh, water before they cooled out it mean after the heavy exercise uh, after putting into the stable they should not provide uh, right feed of water at once we should allow it to cool down there at least for one hour then animal may start normal feeding after that we can provide the uh, recommended level of feed then maintain the regular exercise regime so they have to maintain the regular exercise regime as i mentioned earlier although they are not using for their purpose they have to provide the uh, regular exercises to the animal then uh, other very important thing is they should uh, make all the changes in diet exercise and uh, right management system gradually not um, and those horses may not able to tolerate those sudden changes for an example when they want to change the diet a to diet b first they have to provide uh, 70% of diet uh, plus 25% of diet as a mixture then they have to continue it for several days after that they can uh, give 50% of uh, diet a uh, they can add 50% uh, of diet b then they can provide as a mixture for another several days after that they can reduce it up to 25% of diet a plus 75% uh, of diet b as they want to increase the diet b right uh, there so that is the uh, way they should uh, do it then we should ask them to uh, control intestinal parasites then uh, they we should advise them to check the effectiveness uh, of that paras antiparasitic drug periodically it mean uh, they should uh, check the dung sample for parasitic eggs then next uh, we have to advise uh, them to not to use the uh, expired parasitic antiparasitic drugs so other one is the uh, lubricants so when you uh, for the susceptible animals if those animals are free roaming especially so we can uh, drench lub git lubricants in 3 to 4 months interval right then uh, uh, for an example we can drench uh, 2 to 4 liters of liquid paraffin in uh, 3 to 4 months interval for that kind of animals then that uh, presence of that uh, early early uh, developing enterolites or the uh, uh, other foreign materials may flush out with that right without uh, developing to the uh, right obstructive level right those are the things that i have to highlight here so uh, uh, according to the um, time factor right uh, i am going to stop this in this point thank you very much for your right kind attention thank you for the uh, good presentation and uh, the lecture from dr damika i think you are giving the everything for regarding the colic but uh, some uh, two three uh, uh, questions are asked. Uh, one is first one is uh, they asked the survey uh, the valvulus type of uh, colic. Uh, they asked for the colic. Everyone uh, fix the colic with valvulus in Sri Lanka. I think uh, you give the answer for that. 
hello and the uh, question is not uh, much clear to me volvulus the yes. volvulus one volvulus yeah. one type right. yeah they ask they ask the uh, the fix anyone uh, in sri lanka anyone fix yeah. this type of uh, treatment you ask for the done with any type of treatment for this volvulus type of Vol volvulus no 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 it is it is uh, actually it is not uh, uh, fortunately it is not uh, uh, common condition right uh, it can happen in younger animals but uh, it is uh, those are not uh, much common uh, cases so uh, we have not uh, corrected that kind of uh, condition but we have seen we have seen several cases in remote areas but uh, right, as i mentioned earlier we have to do the immediate surgery right to correct it but uh, before right we reach there so most of the time animal may die that much uh, severe right the survival rate is survival rate of the volvulus one the low high yeah the survival rate is that uh, uh, prognosis uh, it mean uh, prognosis if yes, you yes. can do the uh, right uh, uh, surgery uh, immediately it is 50% it mean uh, right uh, good if you can uh, correct it immediately right otherwise when you delay it it can lead to uh, that ischemia then uh, right uh, when it start uh, necrosis then uh, we can't Uh, correct it we have to go for the resection and anastomosis of the gut right uh, 50% is the chance yeah. uh, most of the the this the chat box there is a this is a nice presentation they say that this we are is a very nice presentation i think that is the all most of the people are saying this uh, presentation is very nice but no one asked any questions from that right uh, if they won't right, uh, right. they can ask questions live no? yeah wait i think they can uh, right uh, switch on their mics and they can ask so they can uh, type the questions in the chat box okay. even yes chat box they ask for okay, the uh, okay can you ask hello Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Uh, what is the recommended protein percentages in the horse feed? Uh, what do you recommend? Uh, protein percentage. Uh, percentage. Uh, in the concentrate that? feed that is prepared for the horse. Protein percentage. You mean uh, that protein? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, if it is around. Uh, uh, 18 to 20 it is ideal for uh, them uh but i see some of the products uh, some more, bit more uh, protein concentration uh, in sri yeah, lanka yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that that is there even in internationally right the, so according to the right uh, management practice they have recommended uh, different levels i mean that uh, adult uh, uh, horses in general right for that growing animals they want to have more than that right likewise if it, if they are uh, using for that uh, heavy exercises they want to have more right energetic diet so or, um, or else the infant is in growing animals so we have to go for the higher protein diets so different uh, diets are there even even in uh, internationally so they have given yeah. guidelines with the right to use it right according to the requirement Yes, doctor. But what I want to highlight is this: when they feed, they have to. Uh, they just feed. This would be the this. I think I have seen this. This is the main cause for the most of the cali happens because they just feed the concentrate without considering the protein balance. You know. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. That is one of the reason because that. Reason. Uh, yeah uh, other other thing is our right uh, most of our people trying to prepare the horse feed on their own using the available raw materials without even analysis sometimes uh, although analyze it they are not worried about the right content of feed right we have seen uh, that kind of uh, cases also yes you are correct thank you someone asked the the, the using the fluid therapy yeah so more Prognosis than the, the laxatives. Ah, uh, 
you mean that for uh, impacted uh, quality it mean uh, uh, giving uh, fluid therapy yes, without yes, going to the laboratory yes 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 uh, it can't be that uh, as a uh, that uh, supportive treatments definitely we have to provide the fluid therapy because animal may be severely dehydrated severely dehydrated uh, so because of that uh, situation because as i mentioned earlier those are highly the uh, highly excitable highly excitable animals so then uh, uh, we have to correct the fluid requirement separately meantime uh, we have to provide the uh, suitable lubricant for the uh, gut to the gut, uh, lubrication of the gut or to softening of the material when you suspect uh, right uh, uh, feed then we can go for the max alpha like that right that is two different things we have to do both uh both together hi dr damika yeah, yeah, that yeah. was uh, my uh, question because um so a lot of recent studies in impaction colic that's been published on very recent papers yeah. they all talk about a process called overhydration because yeah. it's found that um when the because the feeding faction is such you know it's compacted and it's all dry on the inside so the way to break it down is to provide extra fluids to break apart this feeding faction yeah um so what they found with mineral oil it doesn't effectively break down as well as you know having extra fluids in the body by correcting dehydration and maintaining the maintenance rate um it's good as a you know marker as a transit marker so like you know that your impaction is kind of resolved because it has moved past but in when they have done comparison studies of the different varieties of using only um parental fluids like iv fluids or um enteral fluids through a tube or just only mineral oil it finds that the ones that have gone under enteral fluids are more um the has a faster resolution time of the impactions versus the other two systems as i was wondering because because that's the standard that's used here when i'm, I'm sorry i'm actually studying in malaysia at the moment so that's the standard that they use here right right yes so there's a lot of data to back it up so that's what i was just it's just, uh, it was right, just a small right 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 that also right uh, correct but uh, that is uh, depending on the type of the impaction so right yeah, uh, definitely. That, yeah. then uh, presence of that for an example presence of uh, impaction due to the ingesta right uh, impaction of ingesta yes. we have to have uh -huh. hypoosmotic solution right to mm -hmm. dissolve it. yeah so, so they uh, yeah they recommend so, the magnesium sulfate for sure you have so, to hear we have to go for the magnesium yeah. sulfate in that case right but yes. meantime we have definitely we have to uh, hydrate the animal because that uh, for an example when you use max alpha they are right if you are not providing uh, fluid much fluid it can cause further dehydration of the animal that uh, fluid can yeah, absorb yeah, from definitely. the uh, right mucosa layer yeah yeah that is obvious then uh, right uh, according to the obstructive ma mass we have to change our right uh, that uh, gut lubricant also right mean uh, but uh, we can't avoid the right fluid therapy definitely we have to uh, provide the right enough mm. amount of fluid as you mentioned earlier yes it is correct right according to the type of the obstruction impaction we have to change the uh, right other supportive treatment also yeah of course okay so someone asked the, the... about the feed impaction yeah correct sorry thank you doctor okay welcome uh, someone asked the mention drugs are available in sri lanka sorry that's available uh, mention drugs are available in sri lanka drugs are available in sri lanka yes yes most available. of the drugs are available most ah, of the drugs yeah. are available yeah yeah we can we can find that uh, right i mentioned that uh, available drugs in sri lanka uh, mainly right we can uh, find uh, buscopam compositum and then uh, flunix in meglumin ketoprofen yes. right uh, yes. those are available right uh, that's a supportive therapy all the right necessary fluid types liquid yeah. paraffin uh, right those are available in uh, sri lanka most of the yes there are What many other the other drugs but i didn't mention it those are right not available in uh, sri lanka right uh, that's the other uh, thing the most common type of colic in sri lanka Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, most common type is um, actually that uh, spasmodic colic, right? That is the uh, colic frequently uh, getting in our right uh, animals, right? And uh, but I I can't give number one and two that uh, gas colic also right uh, right uh, uh, more or less uh, right uh, yes having same severity. Yeah, 
in our right condition. But uh, uh, not only that, uh, infection colic also right reporting in uh, right uh, we have seen in uh, right in uh, last uh, few years right infection colic also right uh, there but uh, number one we can give number one to the spasmodic and gas colic okay any questions there is no any questions no uh, thank you very much dr damika i will hand over to the uh, dr sukar vote of thanks thank you Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Marapana. Uh, Dr. Randika Gundwardana, the president of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association, Dr. Damika Pereira, our resource person today, dear doctors, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association, I take this opportunity to extend our most sincere gratitude to our resource person, Dr. Damika Pereira, who accepted our invitation without <coughs> as resource person, despite his decision. Uh, actually, it's a very nice, timely, creative presentation. You shared a lot of your experience, especially uh, new experience for us. Uh, I'm happy to say most of the veterinarian connected to the webinar from overseas, some are from Middle East, some are Indians, uh, Malaysian, New Zealand veterinarians because this webinar series published in World Veterinary Association website. And also, I, I would like to thank our moderator, Dr. Jagat Marapana. Thank you very much, Dr. Jagat Marapana, for your great support. And also, I would like to thank uh, to the doctors, uh, students who participated today, uh, today, to, to today webinar to success today workshop. Thank you very much for your thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.